time had flown by quickly, every year Zoya would make New Year resolutions, but every year she would fail to achieve them. This year she thought to make a list that was easy to accomplish, but yet again, the year was about to come to an end, only a few hours left and yet she had not been able to complete a single thing on the list. With the horrible day she had at work and the bad luck she got when she arrived only two minutes late at the bus stop, she felt flaky and depressed for many reasons. Adding to her sadness was the fact that she was unable to spend the holidays with her parents, as she had a lot of work piled up. She thought to look at the list one last time. Maybe she would be able to complete at least one small thing from the list. Which would aid her in feeling contented and satisfied. Zoya started to cross off everything one by one. Reaching at the last, she abruptly stopped. In small letters it had been written help a person in need. Zoya gazed at the words for a long time. Thinking that maybe she could finish this goal. She strained her head hard but it kept coming up blank. Pacing in the living room, thinking that maybe she could help at the homeless shelter. But it was snowing heavily and the news said it would take at least four hours before clearing up. No one in her neighbor would be needing anything at this moment. She could have dinner with the lonely lady down by the street, but Zoya did not like her presence because of the fact that she always smelled like stale fish. Plopping on the coach, with a sigh, she turned the TV on. Skipping through channels, she found nothing entertaining. Abruptly, with a loud noise bursting through the house. Zoya jumped in terror, looking around but suddenly the electricity went out. Her vision became black as the night. Not even the moon aiding her in sight. The sudden darkness scared her to the core. She roamed her hands, in search for her phone, and was very glad to feel it underneath the cushion behind her. Zoya turned on the torch of her phone but instantly regretted the action, as there was a six-foot-tall man standing in front of her. With a black suit on his body that only showed his icy blue eyes. A sharp knife in his hand. With Zoya's heart beating rapidly and eyes popping out of her head. She started to scream, but before she could utter a single sound the intruder tackled her onto the sofa and put his hand on Zoya's mouth. With a deep voice he said, I'll put this knife in your throat if you utter a single sound. Once the intruder was sure that Zoya was not going to scream, he asked, If I remove my hand from your mouth, will you scream? Weakly, Zoya nodded her head to say no. The intruder removed his hand slowly and released his grip on her hands. No one has to get hurt, just give me what I need. Zoya looked fragile and petrified. Her eyes became watery and in a feeble voice asked. What do you want from me? The man turned the light on. The man looked inquisitively around the house. His eye got glued on the fridge in the kitchen. He stood in front of the fridge. And opened it gently. His eyes bulged after seeing all the food took out a plastic bag from his jacket and began to fill it up. From behind, Zoya was watching intensely. She was surprised to see the actions of the intruder. Out of all the things in the house, why would he open the fridge? Confused by his activities, she got up quietly and strolled towards him. However, the wooden floor under her, screeched by her footsteps, she stopped sharply. Sit back down. The man shouted turning his head with a snap. Zoya followed the instructions, promptly. Her heart beating at the speed of light. She didn't know what to do. She wanted to call the police but knew what the consequences would be. All she could do was sit, without making a sound. After filling the bag with food, the man turned to find Zoya sitting on the coach, looking as if she was about to pass out. The man felt bad for what he was doing. He looked at Zoya, feeling horrible. She backed away in terror, saying. Please take whatever you want, just don't hurt me. The man softened his look and apologized to her. Zoya being surprised by the intruder's words, suddenly looked at him with eyes wide open. The man, in a gentle and remorseful tone said. I am sorry, I know I should not be doing this 
but I don't have any other choice. My wife is in the hospital suffering from cancer. I don't have any money for her treatments. The man voice quivered but completed his words. My children are at home crying from hunger, I do not have a choice, I am sorry. With this the man ran outside and seemed to disappear into thin air. Zoya was shocked. Her mind having million thoughts at once. On one hand she felt anger towards the man, who had broken into her home, but also felt it sympathetic to the man. Not knowing what to feel she went to bed. Even though she felt unpleasant and felt a little bit satisfied due to the event, a thought occurred in her head. Even though, it was unintentional. I was able to accomplish one goal from my list. With this last thought she went to sleep.